Welcome to the Mystical Musings with Friends podcast. Join us in these fun, consciousness-expanding episodes hosted by myself, Kimberly Late, where we discuss the world of the mystical and how this world can enhance your life experience, along with spiritual teachers and leaders from around the world. Join us as we explore subjects including the Ascension and Oneness teachings, Law of Attraction, Channeling, Spiritual Healing, Psychic Explorations and various other journeys within the mystical, esoteric and metaphysical realms. It is a journey behind the veil of our reality and it's a journey of awakening to the powerful being that you truly are. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our next episode of Mystical Musings with Friends. I am Kimberly Late, and I channel the beings of the light. I'm a counselor and spiritual ascension teacher. And um, today I've got a returning guest. I've got Hem here, who is a self love coach and an angel channel. Hi, Hem. Hello, sweetie. Thank you for having me back. It's wonderful. Oh, it's my pleasure. So today we're going to talk about divine will versus free will. So this is kind of a big subject. <laughs> so, um, yeah, divine will and free will. So what is that? We'll discuss that today. So a lot of people perceive, you know, free will is our choice to, you know, choose our own thoughts Free will is to be able to plan our destiny, create our destiny, right? Which is true. And then you've got divine will, which is, you know, that the universe or all that is source basically um, has that choice over us. So we're going to talk about those perspectives. And I think what will, you know, what will come through is that both are correct <laughs> because there is a divine will and free will. So, um, yeah. So, Ham, I'll pass it over to you first. Um, yeah, why don't you tell the um, audience a little about yourself and, um, yeah, what's your take on divine will and free will? Hi, everyone. So, as you know, I'm Hem. I channel angels. I also am a self-love coach. I'm also a lover of yoga. Basically, um, I think when it comes to, like, divine will and free will, it's kind of a balance. We kind of have a 50-50 almost opportunity for change and there's co-creation in there as well. But we do have what I call open moments and field moments. So the open moments are where we're free to completely make our choices about whatever we want to do. And there are other things where, where divine will comes in because we need to go through certain lessons. So if we have karmic lessons, if we have lessons that we need to learn and it's really interesting actually because often when I have like clients or people that I help people always say what are these lessons I can never find these lessons and I'm like because they're things like compassion and kindness and things like that was we're looking for things that are solid and we think will it be making more money or will it be helping someone with their house no it's not it, well it can be that but it's not as simple as that because it's normally something that you wouldn't kind of put, you couldn't stick a pin in. So, yeah, so that's what I think. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, actually, since we're talking about this, I um, have a pre-channeled message that I might read out because I think this beautifully explains what free will and divine will is. I actually channeled this um, from Archangel Michael. So let me read it out to you and then we shall discuss it. All right. So the concept of divine will and free will is dimensional in nature, in which divine will includes the will of source, as well as your higher self and guides. As you are a unique frequency of the one of source, this also includes you. Therefore, in a higher dimensional perspective, divine will is the will of the more expanded you. Free will is the notion that you have control, that you have choice. Free will from a higher dimensional perspective relates to the human experience of creation. 
There is always a divine will in all things, within all experiences. However, you have a human experience within this current reality. So you can choose your thoughts and perspectives, as well as choosing to act in fear or love. You have this choice of fear and love as you exist in a polarity system of reality. Know that there is no wrong choice. However, the great universal laws will come into play as a result of your choice. If you choose fear, then your reality will reflect this. And if you choose love, your reality will reflect this also. Understand that you are truly free. And through choosing acceptance, choosing love, choosing a higher perspective with what manifests within your reality, you allow source, the universe, and all that is to enact the highest will, a will that you co-created to flow more effortlessly through you, allowing you to explore fully your purpose within physical reality. I change your mic or... I love Yeah. That. What do you think about that? Oh, that was amazing. I'll change your mic kind of stomp me there because I've just got really like angel bumps and like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. That's beautiful. It's quite interesting because we think that we we think that we direct everything actually i think as human beings a lot of souls think that they direct everything and it's beautiful to realize that we have that support system i think that's the overarching thing to realize that we have that support system the other thing that archangel michael said there about the love thing and i go on about love all the time so i love anything to do with love but it's that thing where if we keep choosing fear and it's quite pertinent right now this choosing of fear as opposed to love you know when you step into love everything gets that slight bit easier and you don't feel that pull all the time you know like almost this connection of your life as if it's falling apart as if you can't move forward that happens because you stepped into fear as opposed to love and the minute you step into love consciousness and that energy and you ride that wave because it's always a way you're given such a big opportunity that you can you can have whatever you want and you can create a life from that. The minute you step into fear that you actually hit a wall, the wave can't take you and you're not even riding it. And it, and it is something that we, we really need to kind of be really um, aware of within ourselves. And all of us, you know, it doesn't matter who we are, whether we channel angels or not, even for myself, there are times when you just have to be aware of that and remember that and remember that, you know, yes, things are happening outside of you, um, yet we choose how much exposure and how much we absorb ourselves in that. That's true. And also about that, what happens in the outer reality? Well, there are also, you know, refer to these as soul contracts, but these soul contracts are just pre-birth intentions. So know that it's nothing like, okay, you have to explore this. And if you don't, then, you know, it's like you're stuck to it. No, it's just pre-birth intentions. If you're aware of it, you can choose not to do that if you want. And that's fine. That's why we have free will. So for instance, things happening outside of ourselves, there, you know, there's different levels of, of like what we call as soul contracts, right? And that's just the whole, you know, divine will that pops in. So we've got like our pre-birth intentions, like our, what we perceive to be like individual souls. So, so, okay. So I'm coming to this lifetime because I want to explore X, Y, and Z. Maybe I want to explore homelessness. Maybe I want to know what it's like to be abused very severely. You might go, why would I choose that for myself? But you can't experience that. Maybe now that you can't experience it anywhere else but here. And it gives you opportunity for your soul to expand. So we choose these things not from a um, human perspective, right? So we choose certain things in our life going in here. So uh, we, and we choose our parents going, you know, going to this well. So we, we know by doing that, it's going to allow us to be in a trajectory, right? So for instance, if we were going to choose homelessness, maybe we're going to be born through parents who set up those conditions for us, you know, instilled certain beliefs and patterns and, um, you know, conditions, environments and so forth. So that kind of helps us to go on this. And, and, you know, you might call this as a divine will, but we created it. We co-created. And when it comes to like, um, you know, something more like individual level, like perhaps um, we chose something quite, you know, traumatic for us, right? But that person maybe who, who played the persecutor, 
you know, we co-created with them pre-birth. So, you know, they're part of our soul families, right? So pre-birth are like, okay, I want to experience this. Um, can you be my, you know, persecutor? Can you be like that? Can, and then we kind of create these roles pre-birth. And, you know, our soul families carry with us through many lives, but they might just change roles. So, you know, one life, there could be my mom, another life, there could be a persecutor and so forth, right? Um, so basically in saying, so the higher perspective in that is that, that everyone's just playing a role here. So there is a kind of a will, like a higher will, but that's actually us right? We co-created it. And then but we also have that kind of individual free will because we have a choice in how to respond to it, right? When we receive a thought, that's guidance. It's from, you know, our inner self, higher self, God, source, universe, all that is, right? We can choose not to take up on that guidance, that step, because maybe our fear is too great. Instead of pushing past the fear doing anyway, we're like, no, nah, that's too hard. So there's free will because we're choosing fear. Nothing wrong with that, but that's free will. And yes, um, and people might say, okay, free will is because I want to do something that I want to do. I'm passionate, so I'm going to go for this direction. So that's free will. That's also divine will because guess what? If you're passionate about something, obviously you, you you know you, you would have chosen to explore this following your joy leads you to oneness remembrance that's part of a, like a, a overarching kind of soul contract right is to yeah. when you when you follow love when you follow your passion you are embracing reality and you are also in, in part of a collective soul contract right to experience fear, to remember one, oneness, to remember love. So there's different levels of like what we call as free will and divine will. So, you know, like what you said as well, Ham, it's about choosing love. We always have a choice to choose love, to choose acceptance, knowing that everything is a reflection. So, yeah, explore your passions. But, do, but where did the inspiration come from, right? The guidance, the passion. You didn't think that. You attracted those thoughts. Who gave you those thoughts? Your higher self, your guides is a divine will. So it's kind of like, it, it's, it's all like this, right? Divine will, free will. It's, it's, it's all kind of intertwined here. It's in our actions that creates free will. We have a choice to follow the guidance, follow inspiration. And, and you know, the free will is means like, okay, you're not meant to do something you don't like. Okay. So, you know, it's the divine will. I have to do something that I hate. No, free will means you're doing something that you love. It's not like I'm going, you know, I have to suffer and whatever. So it's like, it's all one and the same. And we always have a choice. Yes, we have free will because we have a choice to ignore guidance, ignore our passions, ignore the voice, you know, from our heart. And we, we, we can choose fear. And you know what? Either is fine. It's all good. We're in a expansive life game here. So it's kind of like you can't make a wrong choice, but it's up to you whether you want to remember your power here or not. You want to remember that you are love and oneness. You have a choice to remember that as well. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Just yeah. you're just following your heart and understand that you know you're being guided every step of the way. When you have a thought, an inspiration, that's not your thought. You are attracting that thought. So that's divine will. In a nutshell, really, isn't it? <laughs> It's all intertwined. Yeah, it's interesting actually because it's such a there's such a misconception around um, when we're doing what we love and when we're say not doing what we love. The misconception often is this idea of what is divine will and then this idea of what is free will. Right? Often people in that misconceived and sort of misconceived notion tend to think that oh, but if I love it, oh, but if it's great, oh, but if it really works for me, how can that be divine will? Because we've been kind of conditioned to believe that if it was something of divinity, that we might find it harder, we might find it harder to achieve. But actually, I would say that's not the truth. The truth always is that when you move into your passion, look at me doing this, I love doing this, I love doing these kind of things, right? And when I do my readings and stuff like that, I love doing that kind of thing. And I tried to resist it for a really long time. And now this is what I'm talking about. We misconstrue that love. We misconstrue because we are very conditioned in those areas of not receiving. And because we're preconditioned, we mistake free will and we mistake 
what divine timing and divine will is. We mistake those things because we use our preconditioning to judge those things. And you know, that is so tricky for any of us because once you step into misconstruing, misjudging, then you then step into fear consciousness. And you won't realize it because you still think you're good and you're seeing it from a light perspective. But actually what you're doing is you're seeing it from a confused perspective and confusion is also a little bit on the other side, okay? And that confusion is then you keep questioning that divine will that's been given to you. And I'm gonna own up and fess up, right? They kept saying to me, you need to go and do this. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do it, no. And they were like, no, no, you, you need to go off and talk to people about how you can channel angels, how you can hear us. And I was like, no, 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 this is our thing. And I really didn't want to do it. And the reason I didn't want to do it because I was on that other side. I was on the other side. I was trying to be what I thought was free will. And this is a long time ago now, right? And I was trying to do this. And because of conditioning and from childhood, people that spoke to people that aren't there were not really seen with love really were they so it was kind of a thing of what do I do how do I trust this but in the end it wasn't about whether I trusted it it was whether I was willing to step into what was actually my joy because it was my joy and that is when you step into self-love yeah. and that is you know, when you're loving yourself right because when you're not willing to take that step into divine will you really are saying I don't deserve this i'm not good enough and you think you're being and running on free will i've got my 2.4 children i've got the house i've got the job i've got the money but you still feel dissatisfied you won't admit why you feel dissatisfied but inside you know that there's a calling but you ignore it and you put a lid on it and you put another lid on it you put it in another box you try and hide it that's your inability to step into your true source energy your strength your power yeah oh that's wonderfully said him exactly and um in in relation to that like you said control that's a good point and the the uh, message i just read out to michael um touched on that that sometimes we perceive free will is that we have control right but control is quite limit it limits us right and also the notion of, you know, divine will is a power outside of itself. Like we don't have control. But guess what? At the higher powers, source, God, is also us. Because we are source, which is a unique frequency of source. So we, so if you perceive like um, there's some higher force that has control over us, that's actually us as well. So in a way, we, we are completely free in every single way. It's only when we are attached to that illusion of fear of, of, you know, duality when we see separateness and, you know, as a collective, again, collective soul contracts is another collective real is that we are collectively moving out of fear into love, into oneness, remembrance. And that's why there's been, you know, many worldwide events happening at the moment to trigger us, to catalyze us. It's so we can, you know, let all those new programs of fear within us come to the surface to heal, to transmute, right. To unite all aspects of us. So they, they you know, and, you know, and things that happen around the world, might, people might think, if okay, how could that happen? If there is a God, if there's a higher power, what, why would they let that happen? But when you understand that there's always a higher perspective for things occurring, right? There is like in the, what we call, you know, again, individual soul contracts and collective soul contracts. For instance, when something um, maybe traumatic, something, you know, quite catastrophic happens right you, and it happens on like a, a, a wide world level or it gets like in the media what happens a lot of the world sends the love and the pouring to an area of the world and that lifts the consciousness up so like that's just one example of like collective soul contracts but you know what michael said is as well about the and you mentioned too is the control and the free will so that's yeah i think it's a it's a misconception it's just a bit conditioned right to control our reality but control is so we can have a false sense of security and even in the like you know even law of attraction manifesting even a lot of that now is on control like i have to, you have to manifest a million dollars and you need to control it and you need to think the specific details to manifest it so guess what happens we don't receive the million dollars ah, law of attraction doesn't work, ah, I'm no good, I'm not a good manifester, I'm crap in my journey, judge yourself, and then back in the fear, and back goes the lid, right? 
So, um, look, control, yes, we're very conditioned to control, even, you know, in relations even to our, our spiritual path sometimes, right? So the whole notion of control and free will, this is where the universe can really flow through you, right? Because, like, for instance, okay, you want to control your reality, you want free will, okay, but that's always based on how we perceive ourselves. So if you only see yourself to be this worthy, guess what you're going to do? You're going to create goals to reach this level. Okay, I'm only going to reach for here, um, my career, for instance. I'm only going to do this because this is, this is, you know, where I see myself as worthy to be, right? But what if you were to take away that control, take away that bar you've placed on yourself and just follow the guidance and allow the universe to reveal to you why you are here. And <laughs> more often than not, it's going to surprise you. Actually, it probably will always surprise you because what you are truly capable of is not what we can actually, you know, can imagine. You know, I never thought I could channel. I never thought this was in the cards for me. It's just, you know, one thing that led to another thing, became a, um, a counsellor. And then when I was counselling people, I realised I was channeling and then so forth and so forth. And I, knew, and I know my whole counselling uh, journey led me to become a channel, right? And um, everything is working together. So there's many levels that's going on. If you want to allow yourself to kind of work with both the divine will and free will from a higher perspective, it's, you know, it's going to ask you to let go of the control. And yeah, it's going to be scary, right? Because if you control everything in your reality, it, it makes you feel kind of safe, right? Because if I could control my conditions, yes, I'm limiting myself, but I know, I know what to expect, right? The fear of the unknown doesn't come into play. But the universe, all that is, is telling you, you need to like get used to that fear of the unknown because that's where your superpowers become birthed, right? Because if you can let go of your conditions and control, so what's going to happen if you can be in the present moment, follow the guidance, and yes, sometimes it's going to appear to be your own thoughts, but it's not your own thoughts. You're attracting them. And, you know, they might be scary and you might disregard them because, like, okay, I'm being guided to do, like, X, Y, and Z. However, I don't know how I'm going to get to the next step. So you think, that's no, too hard. I can't do it. But they don't want you to go 100 steps ahead. The higher you wants you just to take one step at a time so you might get inspiration and maybe you just want to research something or do one movement towards it and as you do that you create a momentum and then as you you know push past the fear put yourself out there yes um, you are going to have to put yourself out of your comfort zone one way or the other right get used to it guys if you're not doing it already right <laughs> the movement towards it right you don't have to take a full step just take maybe a half a step at a time if that's if it's easier but you you know, we've been asked to really move forwards with this. So when you get the guidance, move forwards. And um, by doing that, you will you open the channel, right, to get the, the divine will, universe will to move through you and becomes more clear to you. And then you'll have more clarity on, you know, our free will, so to speak, right? Because then you'll be able to really notice when you're in fear and be in an aligned point to choose love over fear, you know, because when we're not in alignment, when we're not aware of our emotions, we usually disregard it and act on fear. But if you are aware when you're negative emotion and fear, you can acknowledge it. Ah, oh, okay, that's interesting. And, and acknowledge it as a message. And then, you know, you can work on sitting with it. You can work on seeing the limiting belief you have about yourself, be in the moment, move towards it. And which with practice, you'll be able to even flow further, right? You'll get even more guidance. It's, it's, like you, it's like you're declaring to the universe, hello, I'm ready, you know? So you're going to be bombarded with more and more guidance, right? So it's kind of, um, the, the, you, you don't get the information coming to you unless you take action. You've got to make the, the non-tangible tangible. So once you do that, you'll find, you you know, you'll go more into the flow and, um, yeah, you'll surprise yourself and, um, yeah. But take that bar, take that level that you've placed on yourself because you're much more than, you know, what you look like in the mirror. You know, you're who you truly are. You know, we can't even comprehend, you know, your source, your God. How can you not be worthy? Yeah, it's true. What Kim says is really true. And it taps into source energy and it's energy. You're working with energy. Now, um, I think it's Abraham Hicks says, you know, about the vibrational energy that you're attracting. So you're only going to attract the energy that you're feeling worthy of. 
So you do need to, as Kim was saying, you need to remove the bar because what often happens, and we all do this and we're all culprits of it, okay? I'm still eating bars in place. We go, oh, I'm going there. And then we hit our heads against the thing. Oh, this is ridiculous. I need to move forward, but you don't want to because you think, oh, what's on the other side of that bar? And you don't want to. And even though divine will and your higher self is saying to you, no, no, come on, and it's giving you ideas. You know what happens? You start stocking the ideas under here. So you start, all these ideas are coming to you and they're sticking under here because you're like, I can't go there because that might happen if I do that. And I'm not going over there because if I do that, that's going to happen. So you stay under here and eventually, you know what happens? And this is the thing. And this is why I would say, start listening as soon as you hear it. Start taking those steps as soon as you hear it. Because otherwise what happens is you start getting problems and we could be sickness. It could be life circumstances that start getting distressful. It could be experiences that you think, why am I going through this? You're going to stay under this roof. You're going to stay there. And they're saying, come on. And even you're saying, come on, your whole inner self is driving you towards that. And that is resistance, my friends. That is resistance. You are going, no, no, no. As you stop in resistance, you open the door to all sorts of fear. And while you open the door to that fear, you can't tap into your free will or divine will, because what you're doing instead is you're moving further and you get sucked further into that fear if you're not careful. So it's about really bringing yourself to that love connection for you, knowing it's all for you, trusting in yourself by recognizing it's all for you and saying, I got this, I've got this. Now, here's the trick and it is the trick. OK, yes. I know you're looking at what they're saying because you can feel they're saying, OK, you need to go and do X. And it's actually quite a big thing. Do you know the whole story? You kind of have a little bit of that in your mind. But you do remember if you're going to train, say, to be a lawyer, for example, you're not going to suddenly be a lawyer tomorrow just because you decided it. Are you? You're not, right? That's not going to happen for you. You have to take the steps. You'd have to research being a lawyer. Then you'd have to go and look at colleges, say, where you might go to. Or you might have to take journeys to places you might go to to live because that might change. But these are steps. And we're fearful because we're looking at the whole thing, what we're going to achieve. You forget that and you start thinking, I take the steps. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Start taking the steps. Then you might think, I'm going over there. And suddenly you go, hang on a minute, even more things open up to you. Okay, I'm not going to be a lawyer. I'm a healer. I'm actually a healer. I could do this. Oh, but I don't like that. The lawyer is a bit easier. No, I'm going to keep going to the lawyer. But you start feeling that it again because you suddenly realize this was a way to draw you to your true, authentic self. And do you know what I believe? And this is just my belief. It doesn't have to be anything else. Okay, it's just how I see the world. I actually think our major free will is when we are so open to that flow, so malleable, so soft, that we can just take those steps without even questioning them and just go, okay, so I'm going to have two weeks where I lay around doing nothing or, okay, I'm going to have two really strong weeks where I really go for what you're suggesting and I start looking into it and doing it. And it's having that strength. And so divine will is you, right? And I'm with Kim. Free will is you. It's all you. And Archangel Michael, actually, because that's what he said, too. This is all about you trusting you. And like I said, it steps right back into self-love again. You need to trust you. And I know, and I'm going to go here, actually. I know sometimes other people's voices and noise and opinions are going to try and slay you and stop you and force you down a road where you can't go beyond that wall because they want to keep you there not because they're being horrible but because they also have some fear stories they also feel it's safe under there and you're their friend and they love you and they want you to stay where you are because that makes them feel a bit safer it's not because they're being mean it's because they also don't understand and they're still a little bit not ready but you know if people love you and care for you when you start going down these roads they will stay with you they won't go they won't disappear and that is something to really understand. Your will is the honest will. It's your authentic, loving, true self. And it moves slightly beyond just that 
human being concept. It moves into soul-like consciousness. It takes you into an energy gateway that is so much more refined than that fear story that you get stuck in. And when you move into that refinement, you create a vibratory energy that opens the door for you to be able to attract more and more and more. And in, in a way, it will give you more and more choice. Oh, that's wonderfully said. And yeah, what you said too about um, that others who might be in fear, um, in relation to that as well, when you are triggered by negative emotion, when things like that happen, when you have interactions and, you know, you are triggered, they are also, you know, being a master teacher to you, right? If you have a negative emotion, law of reflection, they're reflecting a limited belief you have about yourself. So if you think, if you believe that you are not good enough, well, guess what? You, you, somewhere along the line, you might come across someone and they might say something that makes you feel not worthy. They might, you know, put you down, so to speak. They might, you know, make you, you know, feel a bit smaller because you have that belief within you that you're not good enough. So you're going to reflect that and, and they're honoring that, right, for you. So when things like that happen, if you have negative emotion in that moment, they're reflecting a belief you have about yourself. So in that moment, you can be like, okay, you know, breathe and you can be like, I'm thankful they are master teacher. They are illuminating an aspect of me that I'm not loving. So you can actually practice gratitude. I know it might be hard in the moment, especially when you're really triggered to be like, oh, thank you for this, you know. <laughs> but with practice, you can do it, right? Trust me, because I can do it. It takes practice, yes. Yeah. Sometimes it depends who they are. If it's someone really close to you, like a partner, yes, yeah, sometimes it's really difficult to be like straight away, go, oh, high perspective. You know, it might take you some time to kind of, you know, be the observer and see it from a higher perspective. But you can with practice. You can yeah. be like, okay, this person is a master teacher. They're playing a role for me. They are love. I'm a being of pure love. This person's a being of pure love. They are showing me there's a part of me I'm not loving. So this is our soul lesson because I'm ready for evolution. It's going to assist me to expand my consciousness. It's like a test, right? So if I can see the higher perspective, maybe I don't know what it is in this moment, but I can see it as a soul lesson, you will find that you'll have a relief come over you. And all of a sudden, even if you cannot see the, the, the you know, all the details of them to believe in that moment, that situation will change. So if there was anger, for instance, coming from that other person, that anger will just fizzle out all, all of its own. You don't even have to say a word. It's because they're mirroring your vibration. And then it can happen as well. So that person can maybe say something to you that might seem very negative. But if you're not triggered by negative emotion, then guess what? They are, they, you're playing the mirror now to them. And then if they, you know, have the negative emotion, but you're not negative, then you know it's just their stuff, not your stuff, right? So that's when you know it's their stuff, not your stuff, right? <laughs> so, you know, it takes practice. And um, when you can act in acceptance, it just shows you, you know, how far you can go in this and how we are God creators here. And, you know, free will, divine will, end of the day, it's all us, just different versions of us, right? So we, yeah. if we can, you know, go through our physical reality, with the eyes of source, with the eyes of one, whereas we're, you know, we're seeing ourselves and all others in our reality from the perspective of source, you know, that all is perfect. There is no wrong, there is no right, but all is perfect and it's, everything is happening for us, for our expansion, you know. And, of course, when things happen, you're like, okay, whatever, like, okay, this is part of the soul journey. You, can, you know, you use love here as a human, right, if we use a frequency of love, which is unconditional acceptance, right? You're seeing things from the viewpoint from the eyes of source. And this is how we expand. This is how we transmute. So it might be hard to love someone or a situation, but if you can practice acceptance, that's a frequency of love, right? You don't have to agree with certain behaviors, but if you can accept them, you're, you're you know, letting go of the resistance. They're seeing the higher perspective, allowing more information to flow through you, right? And then, um, of course, you can increase that to gratitude. And, yes, you can love everything in your reality, but it takes practice. So, you know, acceptance is, is a good way into it and compassion. So even those that cause you harm, that you perceive to cause you harm or situations you don't agree with, you can still send your compassion, right? It's, it's, you don't have to be this, um, 
you know, even though, yeah, you are the universe and all that, it doesn't mean you don't have to stop showing compassion and stop living in the heart. It's the opposite. We're here to really navigate from the heart center. Yes, we are source and we are God. And yes, all is a reflection of us. But how we expand in a human reality is through love because that's who we are in physical reality. But yeah, it takes practice. Don't worry. We all go there. We all go into fear. <laughs> it's part of the human experience. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it does it takes complete righteous can me right there's that thing you know what script are you running through your head and it's that script that we we have to get in well not have to is not the right word but we, it, we it'd be good for us to get into a habit of actually recognizing the script that we're running and saying okay what did i just think then how did i just feel about that what was i just saying to myself about that because often what happens is we go straight to reaction rather than saying okay i i have that reaction but i i'm going to look at it so we go to the reaction we, we stay there we stay in that reaction and we stay in this isn't very nice they said that to me i'm really upset and i'm i'm really annoyed with them and i why have they said that i've always been really kind to them and we don't we tend not to allow ourselves that permission because i would say it's a permission thing to look at it and to go hang on where's this script come from why do I even think this? What is it about myself that has made this something that is a natural reaction, a natural go-to for me? You can it, to move out of these spaces. We have to get to the space where we're willing to analyze how our script comes across for us. If we're not willing to do that, we can say stuck. Okay. So, for example, for myself, I'll give you an example. Actually, I always decided in my head, my current other half, I would always say. Well, he, he does X, and so that really makes me annoyed, and rah, rah, rah. And then I decided, hang on, this isn't really fair. I am going to be open to looking at it from another perspective. And when I started looking at it from another perspective, I realized it was my inner fear of what this relationship needed to look like. And so I gave up control of that, let go of that script, told myself it wasn't necessary, and things, got, things changed a lot. From looking at that script and it was a really tiny attitude and it was such a big shift so if you're really willing to take that moment to say look i can step into divine will because i'm also willing to look at the whole of myself and really access my free will in a good way because remember everything that's for you all the things that you're moving towards they're your contracts. They're the things you've said you're going to come here to do. You've said you're going to come here to learn. So if you're standing there going, I'm not going to analyze my script. I'm going to stay under that roof. I'm not going to do these things. Then the only person that you're not loving is you. You. It's always you. It's always you. It's always for you. And it's always you. And that's strength of love. When you can get to that. And like I'm always saying to uh, my clients and people, you know, love is not wishy-washy and pink. It's strong. It's powerful. And it's that, you know, it's the root of the warrior, the person that's going to be strong and find their, their purpose and their soul calling and their love, right? And when you're willing to go there and take that step and take that journey and even take the rough and the smooth, because, you know, we are living in a very dense human experience and we are going to have polarized experiences because that's the world that we're living in and there is duality here we need to accept that on a very fundamental level but from a very loving perspective and once we do that then we can we can change everything but it just takes those shifts those little shifts in our now i'm going to be honest what it tends to be is our very strong beliefs our limitations and our value systems that get stuck we tend to get stuck underneath these very kind of dogmatic and also um, sort of almost sometimes they're quite bureaucratic as well viewpoints that have come down genera generationally, can't say that word, through the line, the line. We have absorbed them. And sometimes they're also genetically within us and they're ancestrally within us. We've absorbed them. We know, um, and some of us have bloodline and um, system breakers, and we actually ancestrally line, we clear. But if you're still resistant and reticent to do that thing, you're going to come up against that wall again. 
And it's just recognizing that if you're willing to just step into that, and it's your divine will, if you keep hitting that situation and that problem, then it is somehow something saying to you, come on, I'm trying to get your attention. Come on, you know, just change this perspective a little bit and everything for you starts to change. And you think, because, you know, I had a friend of mine and there was something that was going on in her life. And I told her a really tiny shift in what she was thinking. And she couldn't believe that just that small, I only said about three words, that those three words I said, changed her life that is actually how simple it is it's just looking at something from the other perspective we tend to get really really stuck in looking at it one way no but i think this no but it's this but we find it really hard sometimes to just go oh hang on a minute there's another view of this there's another take on this and this is why a relationship like kim was saying relationship tests you because that's what relationships do it it's showing you, it's showing you that you already know the answer. You just are blinkered to it or you're trying really hard not to see it. Yeah, no, that's, you know, and, and those, when we go into fear, right, that is actually an aspect of us, right? So <clears throat> when you're triggered by fear, that's actually a separated aspect of us that we have not loved, that we've repressed, perhaps, We've been conditioned that this part of us isn't good enough. Perhaps it relates to, you know, um, something happened in the in our childhood that caused us trauma or pain, disconnection. Yeah. So, you know, all these things that happen throughout our life, you know, you know, forms, conditions within us, limiting beliefs and patterns, programs of thinking, right? So, yeah, it's when you're triggered by that negative emotion, it's not someone causing you harm, causing you pain. In the higher perspective, they're reflecting a belief you have about yourself and about reality. So if you don't want to be, I mean, you know, we can soften the trigger, but as long as we're in polarity system, we're still going to get triggered. Yes, you don't have yeah. to suffer through it. You get to a point where you can be triggered and it'll be like, okay, that's annoyance. Oh, okay. And then you can kind of like, you know, you know where it is, you know. So with time, it doesn't become a big like a suffering event, right? But you have to be willing to process it, you know, shadow work. I talk about it all the time. I teach about it all the time, you know, especially as a counsellor, um, background of counselling. I infuse all that, you know, in what I do. And, yeah, shadow work, shadow work, shadow work. You can't just think happy thoughts. Um, it's about really stepping into that motion. So, yes, if you have to process what Hem was saying. If you've got the limiting belief, it's when you have awareness of it, right? Sometimes you don't have awareness. So to get awareness of the belief system, if it, if it doesn't come to you in the moment, sit with it, take a moment and, and feel the emotion. We've been conditioned not to feel our emotions. Like, ah, oh, this emotion is bad. It's unwanted. Or if I sit with anger, I'm going to attract more anger. So we have this kind of distorted beliefs too on law of attraction and universal laws. But to let go, we need to kind of let go of resistance to the emotion to see the gifts within it. If we don't, it becomes a mystery and it'll keep popping up, right? So yeah. bring it into your heart space. It's, you know, your heart portal. So whatever emotion you're feeling, feel it. If you need to cry, cry. If you need to shout, shout, express, you know, move it through your body, feel the emotion. Because in that moment, you let go of the resistance. And in that moment of vulnerability in your heart center, that's when you can communicate to it. Yes, you can communicate to your emotions because that emotions are actually aspects of you. So you'll be communicating to an aspect of you, to a dimensional version of you that needs your love. So this is where the work is to show, you know, to give your own self-compassion to yourself, to a, a version of you who's in fear. Right. So feel the emotion in your heart. Yes, I know it sucks. I know it's painful. And I have, you know, if it's very traumatic, yes, do this in the work with a professional if you feel safer in that way, right? If you don't feel safer, do it on your own. Um, you know, you can you can seek professional help in this process, but you need to feel the emotion. And then you can open the dialogue and you can go, okay, what are you trying to show me? What am I not seeing? What is my limiting belief here? What is the message you'd like to provide to me? Communicate. Yes, you can communicate. You will receive the answer. Perhaps the answer is not something that you want to hear, but it's the answer. So, you know, sit with it. And it's about being vulnerable to it. And, you know, sometimes we don't want the answer because we're worried, okay, if it's something bad, I'm going to have to deal with it or it means I'm not as good as I think I am. Or we kind of make all these excuses as to, to, to a resistance, right, to, to getting the answer. But if you can be vulnerable, 
sit in your heart and be open, communicate, you will get the answer. It might not be a bold voice. It could be just a feeling, a knowing, you know, it could be a memory that's coming from a past. It could even be from another life you're living, you know, but it's about opening your senses and with practice, you will receive the message, right? And that's how we do it. And when you do that, when you send the love and compassion, so yes, if you feel the anger, okay, okay, then you get the belief. Okay, maybe you judge something as wrong, whatever it is. Now you have this belief. Immerse it with love. If it's part of you that's judging, love that part of you. It's okay to judge. It's okay to have this belief, right? That's how you heal. That's how you transmute fear into love. You need to love it. You need to love it a lot, right? Immerse it, right? And practice acceptance. And, you know, if you need to forgive, forgive. In high truth, of course, you don't need to forgive. But if that helps you, then forgive. And, you know, no matter what happened in your past, it happened for you. So if this is situated from a past event, then practice acceptance of that event, knowing that everything that happened in that situation was for your evolution and the evolution of all involved. Just, you know, but you need to feel the emotion if you want to heal. And you'll find if you're willing to go there and be vulnerable, you'll find you'll heal faster and you'll see the soul lesson there, the gift there. And then by doing that, you actually increase your frequency. You open the portal even further to receive more clarity, to receive more open communication with your higher self, the source, God, all that is, right? So it's through the shadow work where you actually heighten your intuitive psychic abilities and you really rediscover sure. your, you know, your specific soul purpose here because we have a collective soul purpose, yes, but we have also individual reasons why we're here. So it's all about being willing to be vulnerable into the heart center. And then you'll see that you, you'll have more power in taking free will because you'll then be able to choose love because if, you if you know, automatically you might choose fear right but if you can be in alignment do that shadow work you won't be automatically triggered you'll be able to yes you might be triggered initially but then you'll be like okay i'm going to choose love and that's free will you have a choice exactly and that is so true and you know the answer also it hides behind that emotion so the answer to where you need to go next is always behind that emotion so if you're really angry about something or you get really irritated by something Whatever is behind the emotion is something you've not dealt with yet. So it, look, this is these are gifts. We often want everything to be smooth and beautiful and lovely. And so we don't want to feel the pain to get to the gift. And it's really odd now because I do it all the time. So I'm really willing to just go over there and look for it. But I get why we're sort of slightly fearful because we think, well, what's behind there? I don't want to know. And the reason is because what we tend to put behind these emotions were childhood fear stories, right? So in your childhood, you decided that X was scary or this was how you protected yourself was by putting this particular block in place, okay? But the thing is then as you grow up and you become older and you start experiencing life, it actually puts a stop to you doing certain things. And you're thinking, why am I really rubbish at this? Why am I finding this really hard? Why am I getting really angry about this? So you start to say to yourself, okay, I want to go behind that emotion. I want to have a look at it. I want to know what it is. And then you start seeing it. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. And you get a bit scared. You run away. And then you come back again. And you have another little look. But it's about giving yourself that permission and that love. So approach it from love as opposed to that feels really horrible. So if you approach it from love and then you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to approach this from love. I'm going to really step into this. I'm going to really look at this and I'm going to analyze it and you'll find what it is. And you know, the thing that I always find that the most interesting and sometimes surprising is it tends to be tiny little things. And I'm going to give you an example of one of mine. I had a little bit of an issue on Saturday about something. And I was like, this isn't very nice. I don't like what's happened here. So I went into the emotion. I decided I'm going to go into this emotion, see what it is. What is it? And it came back all the way back to when I was at school. And two girls were quite horrible to me. And they decided we we're going on a school trip. And we were all meant to sit together. And they ran off and went together and left me all on my own. And I had to sit with complete strangers on my own. And it really, uh, this trigger moment brought up this incident in my life. Now, when we're willing to go into those emotions, we find out the things that are bothering us. And it's sometimes, and I know it sounds really, really simplistic, but it's the truth, okay? These tiny little things can stop us. So for me, 
they stop me from being able to create new relationships with people because I think people aren't safe, right? And that's a big thing when you think about it. Think of how much that um, um, affects my life if I don't want to make new friends and I don't want to talk to new people, right? Now, you do the same thing. You find something that really upsets you. Take that same approach. Go into that emotion. Ask it what it is. Look, it came quickly for me because I do this work. It might take some time. Give yourself the permission to take your time. Like I say, approach it with love. And remember, it's the little one. It's that little aspect of you. That really beautiful aspect of you deserves a love and hugs and, you know, understanding, not criticism or judgment, love. And you take the little one and you say, it's okay that that happened. It's okay. You know, we now get it. We now understand how we viewed it and we can step outside of it. Because, you know, none of us need to live in those pockets of fear that we created when we were little. And it's not because we were bad when we were little. We just didn't have the emotional development to recognize that, you know, it didn't really matter if they went and sat somewhere else than me. I just felt so wounded because I felt that I was um, rejected and abandoned by them. And they were my best friends. So imagine then how my self went in that age. I was young. Imagine how my body went. Imagine how I felt inside. And what happens is when you hit a similar emotion layer in life, that same reaction comes up because it's what's familiar to you, right? So, and then... You say, okay, like I did what I did, so you're doing the same thing. And then you go, oh, now I can step into this divine aspect of myself. I can meet new people now. Woohoo! I can go and sign that contract. I can step into that job that I've been so fearful of. I've always wanted to be, you know, an instructor for this, whatever it is. You are the master of your ship. You are the divinity. You are that beautiful light aspect that can draw beauty towards yourself all it is is stepping out of these spaces that block you from your true your real true so yeah yeah no, that's yeah that's it's beautiful yeah that must have been a beautiful experience to get that aha moment you know um yeah. but yeah it takes courage you know so it's it's not always easy <laughs> to go there but look <laughs> And look, if it's really challenging, yes, you know, go, go, go get help with it. If you can't do yeah, it, on like, of course, there's always help there. But, you know, we really ask to sit on it and, you know, sit with it and process. And, you know, in relations to like divine will, you know, you might be one of those people who've had a very, what you perceive to be a very sucky life, you know, maybe your life, you've, you've gone through a lot of trauma in your life, a lot of sickness in your life. And then you're like, how could this happen? And then, you know, it, it, you know, it can be easy to lose your faith, to see the higher perspectives. And of course, you'll be highly susceptible to, to view your reality in fear. It's only normal that all these kind of what you perceive to be bad things that happen to you. Of course, it's only normal for you to question your reality, question is, you know, is there a higher power? How can this happen to me? So it's understandable. But you know, if, if you've gone through a life with, you know, very intense life experiences and know that it's for you in some way that we, you know, and you might be, if you're in the middle of it, it's, it can be very hard to see that, but understand that, you know, themes we choose pre-birth to explore in this life, right? So yeah, you can call it divine will, but it's also our will. It's free will because we co-created with people. Just know if you're experiencing adversity, just know that you have adversity because you were so powerful. It's like you wanted the extra challenge, right? You wanted the handicap. So if you're experiencing specifically difficult circumstances, well, guess what? It just shows how powerful you are and that you wanted something so challenging in this reality. You wouldn't choose something for yourself unless you are very powerful, unless you knew you had the abilities to work through and overcome it. All that's missing is a, is a self-perception of worthiness and love. That's all you need to elevate it, to raise your frequency, to unlock the abilities to work it through, right? So, you know... It's all there. And, you know, I think I might have mentioned this before. I'm not sure. But, you know, um, coming from a background as is counselling, you know, when I went to uni because I, you know, got my degree and postgrads and, you know, it's a common theme for counsellors, right? There's a term called the wounded healer. I don't know if it's a term over in the UK, but it's very common here. And you see most of the people that went you know, trained had some kind of adversity, trauma in their life. 
So something yeah. very, what we call, is very terrible happened to them. They've kind of come out the other side, maybe it was through their own therapy or their own inner healing journey. And now yeah. it kind of created a passion to now go out in the world and help others. Guess what? That is divine will. And it's also free will, right? So this is why it's an example. And it's hap it happened to me. I went through a trauma and it made me take the inner journey. And then that sparked my passion to become a counselor. And then now I'm a channel. Now I'll kind of combine the both, right? So if you can see that example, you can see that no matter what we go through, there's a higher purpose for it, right? So if you've yeah. gone through some, some adversity, knowing that you can acquire much wisdom from that experience, you can now go out and empower others. If you want, you don't have to, right? But listen to the calling within, you know, and, you know, you could just be in alignment with yourself and you being in alignment by being in the, in the frequency of love, you are going to affect all those around you. So it doesn't mean you have to do some grand role, some big teacher role, right? If you can transform the trauma, transform the fear, You'll yeah. heighten your frequency to such a point you're affecting all those around you, not just your own life, but the whole collective consciousness. You are raising the frequency of the whole human race just by you in, being in alignment, being able to see yourself and your reality through the eyes of love, unconditional love, right? Mm -hmm. So no matter what's happened to you, it's, it is a process, of course, of healing. But just know if you're one of those people who have experienced something, know there is a higher reason behind it, even if you cannot see it in this moment. And um, yeah, it's, you know, so many people that I know, you know, who've gone through adversity and now like they're powerful leaders throughout the world, you know, so you can, you can do your own research, you get evidence for this. A lot of people that now um, are way showers, those that inspire others have gone through, you know, difficult challenges in their life, but they didn't give up, you know, yes, they experienced fear and their challenges, but they were willing to push past the fear. They're willing to do their process work. And now they're at a point now can they use that to empower others. So there's always a higher reason for it all. So the divine will is always working through you and free will. You always have a choice to choose love or fear, right? And it's about letting, it's about changing your perspective of control and how that relates to free will. It's about letting go of control and allowing the universe, your higher you, your higher self could be unit in a future dimension, you in the multiverse, right? Because we're multidimensional beings. The universe, all it is to move through you, to allow you to explore why you came here. But you can choose love or fear, up to you, right? Even if you have awareness of um, the purpose that you're here, as long as you have awareness, you can go, okay, I don't want to choose that. That's still a choice and that's fine. But once you have aware awareness of it, usually it's something you, well, I think, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone who's discovered their sole purpose and didn't want it. So I don't know about you, but usually your sole purpose is something that you love. It's a passion, right? I mean, maybe someone out there, I don't know. But if you're fifth, but if you have awareness of your sole purpose and you don't want to do it, um, I would ask you maybe to look behind it because maybe it's just fear that's, you know, yeah. having that, that viewpoint. But anyway, it's, um, it's basically we're here to take the journey home to love remembrance. So, yeah, divine will, free will, it's, it's basically it's all one and the same. We have a choice. Yeah. Because divine source or your guides, I mean, we channel angels, but guess what? Angels are you and me. We're aspects of angels. We're aspects exactly. of one. They're within us. They're not this. High. Yes, we perceive, you know, I know the religion and conditionings. We, 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 we like to put certain deities and angels, you know, like on a hierarchy, like this big power and we're like lower because if it's a higher power, it means we're lower, right? No, we're all equal. They're just different versions of us. So we're just at a um, at a closer frequency to to pure source consciousness, right? Single point origin. We've just forgotten who we are. We're so highly advanced. It's just process of doing the inner work and remembering our divinity. It's just one step at a time. But just know that there's nothing to fear but fear itself. So if you're willing to be courageous to go in the heart, to do your processing. If you're willing to push past the fear when guidance comes to you, you'll find everything will just flow. Right? The more, like, And what Hem said is true. The more you resist, guess what? The fear is going to increase. And yes, if you, if you keep resisting and keep choosing fear, well, guess what? It's going to start, it's going to cause an energy block within your body. So yes, you might start noticing like physical things happening in your body right it's like your body's divine your body's trying to tell you 
have a look at a belief here. Hello, hello. You know, so if you're not listening, they're going to force you to look. I'm sorry, but it's happened in my life too. You know, I mean, I've been able to see angels since I was adolescent. And then, of course, teenager years older, I'm like, okay, yeah, I see angels, but whatever. You know, I'm a, I want to enjoy my life. I wasn't like really, you know, I wasn't really focused on that, right? Because I was like my early adulthood. I wanted to experience life. And, and um, you know, and what was this, 2008, I was attuned to Reiki as well um and I'm like okay good I'm attuned to Reiki and like, all is good but then again I wasn't really ready to go deep into my spiritual path right I was like okay that's good to have so so and just live my life right which wasn't a waste of time because everything happened in my life allowed me to be where I am today so understand that if you think you're going off your path you're actually not it's just a perception of it that's another that's a whole that's a whole another episode but anyway <laughs> but understand if you look if you resist the call it's going to happen it happened with me every time i resisted the calling i kept getting sick and i had to heal myself back with reiki i had to connect myself again so it's like if i kept ignoring it for so long it, things happened and it kind of forced me to to reconnect right so it's up to you but just know if you have this prolonged um adverse thing happening in your life then it is for you for a reason but understand there is a superpower behind it it's just you have to be willing to do the process work. I know it's hard and I know, you know, there's a big fear of the unknown because we like to feel safe in our reality. But, you know, yeah. our realized divine power is on the other side of fear. We kind of just have to jump and surrender. And, and you know, surrendering to the real of the universe is scary because we think, what, what does the universe have in plan for me? But guess what? You chose it. You co-created. So when you surrender to the real of the universe, you're actually surrendering, surrendering to your own will, all right? So you co-created it with your soul family. So there's nothing to fear with in relations to real, right? And if you follow your passion, that's it. You don't have to know the specific details of your soul purpose. As long as you follow the love, that's your guide, it's true. I want to speak to what we was talking about, about the whole, the trauma aspect, because often we, we can even be resistant on the getting that healed. So, you know, if you do need, and you have gone through trauma and you do need help, seek that help out and give yourself the permission to clean that up because we can, and I, I'm actually speaking kind of a bit from experience here actually, and myself, there's trauma stuff um, hidden behind a lot of my story. And I don't need it there because obviously story taps into ego and I don't need that to be stopping me. And we tend to feel a little bit, I suppose, um, reticent because of that almost um, the shame surrounding expressing that we had trauma, the fact that when we have to bring that up, it can be a little bit like, you know, I'm strong. I don't want to be that person. However, you know, if there is anything like that, there's so much help out there. There's hypnotherapists, there's counsellors like him, there's self-love coaches like myself. There is, there are people out there that can help you to just start that ball rolling. Because, you know, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I did this all on my own. It is tough doing it on your own. And I have these gigs, right? And it's still tough right but if you're at that lower level in in your abilities and you haven't really pushed up through that and you're still trying to do this on your own or you're ignoring it because it's so dense and it's harsh right then yeah be be brave with yourself and give yourself that love even one session can help you to unpick things that are fallen apart within you and then that can give you that aspect of love consciousness that then helps to heal you and helps you to look at it in a totally different way but you see nobody you know we're not islands i mean i know at the moment excuse me i've got this hair in my eye and i have got to get it out <laughs> um yeah we're not islands and nobody has to do everything on their own right I mean, now at the moment, there's this whole being, we're quite isolated and all the stuff that's been going on, right? And I know that. However, there is never, we are connected beings. We are all one being, right? And because we're all that one being, if you need that assistance and you need that help, there is always the other one of you there to help you. You will draw that person that's right for you. You will always be safe in that experience. Always go from your heart when you're looking for that person to help you. And always go from your soul as to what feels right for you okay if there's any kind of fear consciousness if it's nerves that's a different thing okay so test that out 
um, do kind of a litmus test. And that's getting to know your yes and no response. And you can do that just by sitting in your own energy and asking yourself what your yes, no response is. Getting that first, then starting to think about the other things that you need to do. However, I would say, honestly, I'm telling you, even from myself, sometimes we need help. And even myself, I've gone for help. It's... There's nothing shameful, there's nothing embarrassing, there's nothing, oh man, you know, it doesn't show that I'm strong if I go and get this help. I think going and asking for help is strong. But you know, you're powerful, you deserve to have that powerful life. And you know, like Kim was saying, we choose sometimes to come here and experience these difficult situations. And that's because we're already strong, because you're not gonna be given that if you're not already strong. Trust in that aspect. I'm already strong. Yeah, I'm already strong. You just need to get to that strength by exploring that trauma, exploring what you've gone through and recognizing how it's going to lift you up. And then Kim then moved on to, this could be the thing you end up doing. Not necessarily, not for everybody, but sometimes it's that thing you have to go out and to teach and help people with. So like with my self-love stuff, I didn't love myself very much at all. And I, I was constantly attracting toxicity into my life, toxic relationship, toxic people, people constantly telling me what to do because I gave my power away a lot, right? So I had to get to a space where I was willing to say, what is it within me that's allowing this to happen outside of me? And once I'd done that and taken responsibility for that, I changed all aspects of my life. And quite phenomenally, actually, just from very small understanding of the fact that I need also to look at myself. We are trained quite heavily to look outside of ourselves, mm -hmm. into our inner sanctum. Um, and I would really recommend stepping into yourself and closing your eyes and pausing for a few moments and just asking yourself what you think. Yeah, because we tend to be really good at asking everybody else what they think. And then that muddies and confuses our voice because that voice that tells you the, act, the exact answer is quiet, it's very quiet and gentle and soft, right? Tend not to hear it, okay? We tend to ignore it. So just kind of listen out. Give yourself that moment. Take moment, take pause, close your eyes and just say, what is it? What's going on in here for me? So yeah. Mm, that's wonderful. Well, it sounds like um, that's a perfect way to finish and wrap up this session. And um, yeah, if you know if you need help, there's help available. So you don't have to do this alone physically, because of course, non physically, you know, you're never alone. You know, all that is is within you. So you know, what I like to do throughout my life, because you know, I have a special connection with the angels. And when I say special, I just mean um, I'm more intimate because. Um, even though I channel many beings, um, the archangels were the first beings I could channel. So because of this, um, I have I have this kind of, uh, yeah, really nice connection with them. Anyway, um, whenever I'm feeling like in, in a difficult situation or I feel like a lot of fear, and you want to feel that love, if you can't feel it within yourself, call on the angels because their energy is just so intent with unconditional love. You might not be able to perceive them like psychically or, or you know, see them or, you know, but you, you know, if you open your heart and make your intention to connect, you will feel love. You will feel love. That's the, one of the first things you'll notice when angels are around you is this intense, unconditional love. And yes, I'm not saying that, you know, other guides are, are wrong or not as good. It's just that there's like this, they're just like so intense. There's no other, like, you know, I channel so many, so many different beings, um, but the archangels just, they radiate the most unconditional love. Like I remember, um, and this connection that I have, because I remember when I first knew I could ch channel, well, I didn't even know I was good channel. I just thought, okay, they're in my reality. I was, you know, an adolescent and, um, I remember when they came, I, I was like, I just saw these lights in my room. I mean, I didn't really come from a religious background overly. And I don't know, it was just all these lights were in my room. And like, and I'm like, what was that? And all of a sudden this, this unconditional love just came over me. And I remember it went for like a period of a week, right? And I was like, my, I couldn't stop crying. It's just like, I couldn't, I was just in awe and there's so much unconditional love. And now I know that this love is actually the love that we are too. And I remember because at that time I did not see myself as worthy. And I remember saying, 
you know, repeating, I'm not worthy of this. Who am I to see angels? I'm not worthy of this. And I kept like, no, I'm not worthy of this love because I could, it was undeniable, this unconditional love was so intense. I just couldn't stop crying. And I wouldn't sleep like for about a week. I'd be lying there hours on end, just tears running down my eyes because of the intense love. My room was like buzzing with lights. And it was just like, woohoo, the wall, they're like, it's like this door was wide open and to the spiritual world. And they're like, hey, Kimberly's awake now. Let's bombard her, you know? <laughs> it was kind of like that. But, um, yeah, so if you want to feel that love, if you want to know what unconditional love is, which is the love that you are, if you're calling the angels, um, but know that they're not outside of you. Like think, okay, how do I connect with them? How do I know they're here? They, they haven't left you. They are all within each and every one of us. So if you just connect with your heart and open your heart and make the intention to feel their love, to feel the connection with, you know, um, with the angels you'll feel it and then by having that taste of unconditional love this will let you know that's the love that you are too so you can you know practice embodying that love within yourself it takes work guys it's not a, it's not an overnight thing it's a lifelong journey it's okay you know and yeah it's just you know on this journey to, if you can practice acceptance with what is then i tell you you are far ahead than many other people here because the fact you're willing to face your fears just shows how powerful you are you know not everyone has this courage so everyone has the ability to do it but again free will people choose not to go there so if you are willing to go there to enact your free will then you'll find your life can change you know like all for the better and the universe will show you who you truly are. That is, you can't even put into words, guys. It's it's unbelievable. If you just trust the process, trust that you are love, you know, know that you are one with all that is. Wonderful. All right. Hem, thank you so much for joining today. It was wonderful to connect once again. Um, where thank can people find you? Oh, it's my pleasure. So um, my website is um, selfloveselfcaresystem.com, um, www. And I started a new YouTube page. It is literally just new. I'm going to be doing lots of stuff on self-love on there. And that's self-love, self-care system. So you can find that. I am kind of shy about that page, but I have just given you it. But yeah, and I've also got a couple of Facebook handles, which maybe Kim could put in the notes if you've got those. You might not have my, because I've got two Facebook handles now. So I've got one that's www.facebook.com forward slash self-love, self-care system. And I've got another one that is at the end, Live Catalyst Coach. You can have a look on those as well. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I'll put the details in the um description so people can find you. And guys, if you're Thank I'm you. sure if you're if you're watching or listening to this, you probably know about me. But if not, you can read more at um on my website at beingsofthelight.com. You're if you're listening to this, it's on the Mystical Musings with Friends podcast, but also the video is on the YouTube. But yeah, you'll find all the links to what I do, my offerings, um, all the links to all my social media accounts all on my website, beingsofthelight.com. All right. So, friends, go out and play. Open your, my pleasure. Open your heart and embrace life because it's what you co-created it all. So if you, you know, choose free will, you can choose love or choose fear. No, you can't make a wrong choice because you are a God creator here. But wouldn't it be more fun to choose joy? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It'd be fun for me to choose love, but it's okay if you if you're in fear. That's perfect as well. Understand that you always have a choice. You have free will, but there is also a divine will. But it's one and the same. You co-created it all. But yeah, reach out if you need assistance. Um, yeah, and um, just remember that you are never alone. That you are one with all that is. Well, until next time. Love and light. Farewell. Thank you for listening to this episode of Mystical Musings with Friends. To find more info about myself and how to reach out to me about this podcast, please see the episode details. Remember, you are never alone on your journey, for you are one with all that is.